All right, well, I have a building project for a few volunteers. So I'm going to need two teams at two. And I'm going to need you to come up here and I need you to help me build a couple of castle towers. So I'm going to set my table up so we can all see them and enjoy them. And I'm going to bring up my blocks. Because, you know, as a grown man, I have Duplo blocks all over my house. It's the same design, so both teams of two will work on the same project. So I am going to ask Patrick. And I'm going to ask Xander, and they can be a team. I'm going to get Dustin and Kaylin to be the other team. So, so you're, now I will say, you guys were at Sunday school, I think the day I did this also. I promise you all the blocks are here. A few weeks ago in Sunday school, we did the parable of counting the cost, and I, I, I shorted them blocks on purpose. So guys, do not worry. All the blocks are there this week. You will not be shorted. So using that as a guide, you guys got red and yellow, and you have blue and green. I want you to build a tower that looks like that. And go. And Xander, you're in Sunday school before, so you should remember how this thing gets put together. I, I, I didn't get building, uh, building permits, so don't tell the city. Oh, Kaylin's got it right. Yeah, Kaylin's got the right idea. Actually, let's see which team can build theirs the quickest, too. Let's, let's make this even more fun. And, 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 and Patrick and, and, and Xander are, are well ahead on, on this one. <laughs> you might want to peek over your shoulder and see what those guys are doing. They, 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 they've got they've got it all figured out. <laughs> I feel like this is almost like a game of hungry, hungry hippos at the building. I just want to say, I just want to see, it's a race to build your tower. Well, I know if I was building a castle tower for a quick battle, I, I'm thinking I know who I got, who I'd have as my, my team for that. That's a, that's a fine looking tower. <laughs> oh. Well, all right, so, so you guys got yours done. Do you want to give these guys a hand, too? We got it. They got it? Okay, they got it. They said they got it. All right. <laughs> they got it. Oh, no, no, I want you to leave it there, because we need it, and I'm going to actually move it to the front, because I really need a castle tower to help illustrate our point. Thanks, guys. And this is why you come on Youth and Children's Center. You get to play with Duplo. It's very exciting. Oh, nice. That, that's a fine-looking tower. You have extra blocks still, so what, let me do one more layer. There you go. There's your layer, and then I think your tower is a slight, slight bit taller than the other one. Theirs is a little bit bigger. There's good. good job. Thank you very much. So here's my, here's my castle towers. Now, who in the world needs castle towers? Like, why would anyone need a castle tower? What type of person? Xander. A king. A king needs a castle tower. Well, this year our theme is making room. And the Bible, first Bible passage that Kaylin read today had three points, and, and uh, she wrote a version that had the, the three exact words, and then and the one we usually use on Sunday, version of, of the English version we use on Sunday mornings, uses the words build, establish, and fill. And that's gonna, those are going to be the three points that they're talking about on Sunday morning up here in church. And we're going to talk about them ourselves, too. The second passage we had Hannah read is an example of God using the early church 
to do those three things, to build, establish, and fill. God sends the disciples all over the Roman world. And where they go, they start, they share Jesus. They start churches. And as those churches grow, they go it even further. And there's, a, there's so much we can learn from this. But there's two things I think we want to keep in mind when it comes to what God wants us to do as the church in Aurelia. First is this. God is the one who builds, establishes, and fills. All right? God's the one who does the work. God is the one who sends the disciples to Antioch. He's the one who brings all the people to the disciples. And we have to remember, at this point in Acts, the church is still pretty Jewish. So when they start talking to Greeks or Gentiles and they start coming, it's a pretty big deal. And God's doing all these great things, but it's God's doing it. He's the one who draws them. And he's the one who makes sure that they're connected to the church at large. He's the one who gives them the gifts and talents they use to share the good news. And he's the one who then sends people out from Antioch eventually. He's doing the work. We do not need to rely on our own abilities, brains, or talents to make stuff happen. God is the one making everything happen. So you see, we don't have to feel a lot of pressure to, to, to oh, we've got to do this thing, it's got to be successful. We don't have to. We do not have to have degrees in sales, in marketing, in business management. Not that those are bad things, but we don't need to have those things. It does not depend upon our abilities in of themselves. And that, again, it's not to say that those things aren't good things and can't be used by God. But those things don't make the kingdom of God grow. I'm going to put a passage up here, and I'd love for somebody to read it out loud for me. Who wants to give it a good read up there? All right, I'm going to give Kaylin. Can you, can you, can you read it from down there? After all, what is Apollos and what is Paul? We are only people who serve. We helped you believe, to believe the Lord has given each of us our own work to do. I <coughs> planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So the one who plants it plants is not important. The one who waters is not important. It is God who makes things grow. He is the important one. The one who plants and the one who waters have the same purpose. The Lord will give each of them a reward for their work. We work together to serve God. You are like God's field. You are like his building. First Corinthians verse 3 verse 5 to 9. Awesome. Thank you. This passage, this comes from a letter that Paul wrote, and he's writing to the church in Corinth, and they're trying to figure out who's the best Christians because of who their leaders are. And Paul's saying, that's crazy. Doesn't matter. It's God who's doing the work here. Doesn't matter who. I planted the seeds. That's all. That was only my job. Paul's has been the one who's been watering it, but it's God who's doing the work. And I like how he, uh, and I like the word seed. Who, do we have any gardeners in our, in our church this morning? I'm sure we do. All right. So, so some of, maybe some of the plants that they, they grow at home. Types of plants. Big generic. Pardon? Okay. 
Any roses? Okay. Sunflowers. All kinds of now gardeners. So what happens is, is is you plant the seed and then a day later you crack it open, you pull out all the green stuff and you stretch it out and and you know and 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 then you make the photosynthesis happen somehow. Is that how this works? Absolutely not. We do a par our part. We plant the seeds. We maybe make sure that they have sufficient light and good soil. But even in that, it's God who's doing the work. Same thing in the church. We do our part, which is my next point. We do our part. See, number two is, is that while God is the one doing the work, God uses us to build and establish and fill. He uses people. Um, when we read that passage in Acts, there are names that get listed. Barnabas, Saul, Agabus. And there are people who aren't even named. They call them the believers, the disciples. Those are people, human beings, who have made more than their fair share of mistakes in their life. And if you're not sure, read Acts and read Saul's life. He made his fair share of mistakes. But God still used him. You see, God doesn't share the good news with people by putting big sky writing in the sky. And while I know some people have said they've once heard God's audible voice, for the most part, most of us don't. We don't have booming voices all the time. I've never heard God's audible voice. But I have heard God speak through people. He uses ordinary people to share the good news with both words and actions. I have another short Bible passage coming up. And if someone could read that one out for us, that would be really awesome. I'm going to take this over to my good friend Patrick. How can they call on him unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him unless they hear about him? How can they hear about him unless someone preaches to them? And how can anyone, anyone preach without being sent? It is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 to 15. Thank you, Patrick. How can anybody hear the good news unless somebody goes and tells them? God uses people. Um, very recently, a very famous Christian passed away. Who knows the name Billy Graham? Few of us. Billy Graham was a, a very fa famous Christian preacher. Been all over the world sharing Jesus with people in giant stadiums. Telling everybody about Jesus. He had audiences with presidents and prime ministers and all but he, he always 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 was about telling people about Jesus that was the most important message to him from the from the day he decided to follow Jesus until the day he went home now here's the thing about Billy Graham really he didn't have super special training before he started to do this he, yes, he did go to school, but, you know, it wasn't like he went to the greatest school in the world. And, but you see, God still used him. And because of him, millions upon millions of people heard about Jesus and decided to follow him. So that's great. I mean, but, you know, how many of us are going to, you know, tell people about Jesus in giant stadiums or do all those things? But... So how do we, how, do, how can God use us to build, establish, and fill his kingdom? He's the one doing things that we can't see to make this happen. But we do need to act. We do have a job to do that we can do, that he wants us to do. And I've summed it up with this one. Connect with others. Who has a friend? One friend. I like to think I have at least one friend in the world. Who has an acquaintance? 
Some of you, 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 you sat, walk down the road and say, hey, jot, jet your head, sup. We all have someone we connect with at some point. We need to talk to these people. Now we can, and here's the thing, and we can invite them to do things. Now, some of those things could be church related. Um, we, we always are encouraging people to bring their friends to kids club, to day camp, to Sunday morning church. You know, we, would lo we love it when, our, when we have guests here. And you know what? The reason I started going to church wasn't because I was like, you know, darn, I'm just going to walk into that Salvation Army church that's just down the road. I didn't even know the Salvation Army was a church. But I did know my buddy Jeff went to church. And he was a Christian. And when God did kind of make me want to go to church, I talked to him. I later found out he'd been praying for me since the day he met me. But I went with a friend. I didn't go on my own. My friend shared Jesus with me. But you know, it doesn't even have to be in the church. Just invite your friends over. Connect, spend time with people. Talk with them. And do you know what? We can do things to share Jesus. Who here had fun shoveling last Saturday, Sunday, Monday? My shoulder hurts. Still, for other reasons besides shoveling ice. But you know what? Some of us have neighbors who can't do those things on their own or do them very well. It would be a great thing. Now, hopefully we're done shoveling snow until December. Um, but it's get, soon we're going to have grass growing everywhere and leaves falling off of trees. Maybe you can help a neighbor clean up their yard. I know I looked at our backyard and there's broken branches everywhere from when the, all the wind. It's like, oh man, I've got to clean that up. You know what? Everyone has got to clean that up. Maybe go and help out. Maybe find a way to help out at school. We can do things to share God's love with others. And the reason we do that is that's what God has done for us. And the best person who demonstrates that is Jesus. Think about it. When we did not, when we were separated from God, God sent Jesus to show us what it meant to follow, to show us what it looked like to follow God, and then died to pay for our sins. And a lot of you have already made that decision to follow Jesus, but what if you never have decided to follow Jesus? I'm going to invite the worship team to come up now. And you're like, okay, Noel, this all sounds cool, and I like this idea of this kingdom of God. That sounds like a way better kingdom than what's going on around here these days. But how do we make that kingdom happen? Well, the funny thing about the kingdom of God is it's not a place. It is not from west to west mount, stretching from... Mississauga all the way up to Fittins. That's The kingdom of God is not fit into boundaries. The kingdom of God is people. The kingdom grows when people decide to follow Jesus. And if you've never made that decision, I want to make sure that you leave here with that opportunity to do that. So, if you want to say, you know, I've been hearing about this Jesus guy for weeks now, and... And I see the difference he makes in the lives of the people around me. And I want that. I want to be part of this kingdom. I want to help build, establish, and fill his kingdom. Well, I invite you to come to the front here. We're going to sing a song saying, come to the altar. Perhaps a little too on the nose. I don't know. But we do invite you to come to the mercy seat, to the altar, to pray. And if you've never decided to follow Jesus. Someone will come and pray with you to do that. Maybe you just started following Jesus in the past year or two. But you're like, you know what? I still want, I want more. I want to follow Jesus more. I invite you to come to the mercy seat. Say, Jesus, I want to follow you better today. Maybe you've been following Jesus forever. From the time you were in diapers and now it's long past that point. I still invite you to come to the altar to pray and say, God, I still want to help build, establish, and fill your kingdom. Help me to do that. 
And you don't even have to do that at the mercy seat. You could do that. You could stand at the holiness table. You could do that from your seat. But please don't leave here without having spent time with God saying, God, how can I help? How can I be part of this kingdom of God you are building, establishing, and filling? What can I do? Come to the altar.